Hey, do you know what time it is? It is time for the minifig customizer to not talk about custom minifigs and a movie. So, how's it going guys? Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse just dropped tonight. I almost missed it because I actually missed my first showing and then wound up being a whole ordeal and had to get an exchange uh, for my tickets, but it worked out and I got to see the movie tonight. Um, and that happened. I was just not even paying attention uh, at all to my schedule this past week. Had a final exam that I was kind of focused on. Uh, um, along with being completely snowed in and having to uh, shovel an entire 360 foot driveway uh, full of snow and ice with my dad. So everything is sore and I was distracted. This is the first time I think this has ever happened to me, but I managed to see it, like I said, so it was great. Um, and the film was great. Now to those of you who really want some updates on where I'm at with custom minifigures, uh, Nothing has changed in the past week because of pretty much everything that I just mentioned. Um, so I'll give you a look, but there's not much to see. Uh, as you can see, the clones from my buddy Andrew over at AV Figures have not changed. I finally did uh, get in some of the parts to inch my way closer toward finishing them. Um, and Arthur Morgan is still kind of in the same place, even though I have made a little bit of progress uh, on his uh, his belt that will eventually connect to the holster for his pistol that I have to sculpt. So a little bit of progress, but nothing really worth showing. Uh, so definitely check out the, pre the vlog that I posted over my main channel recently. Uh, or uh, I, I have been posting some really good photos of everything over on Patreon. But... Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Holy shit. When this movie was announced in 2016, I really was not expecting much. I just kind of figured, okay, uh, we just got Spider-Man in the MCU. I really would rather they focus all their attention on making the most of him now that we have him in the MCU. And I am not looking forward to some discount Sony animated Miles Morales movie that no one asked for. And holy shit. Uh, I was so wrong back then because now here we are, fast forward two years, the film is here, and holy, I was not expecting it to be this good. I was not expecting it to be so imaginative, so creative, so colorful, so well written, so much. I. I just can't even really put it into words. You have to see this one for yourself. Recapping a movie like this into one quick vlog, I don't really think can be done. It would have to be a podcast or something where I could have a discussion with maybe somebody else who saw it at length because there is just so much to unpack from Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. But uh, to those of you guys who are not really planning on seeing the movie, change that, fix that. If you If you see any movie this December, I mean, <laughs> it may be tough choosing between Spider-Verse, Aquaman, and Bumblebee, but I would definitely make sure you check out Spider-Verse because this is not a movie you wanna miss out on. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse is Lego movie good. The Lego movie directors were directly involved. They were the producers, and of course the directors and 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 you know everybody involved, the animators and, and the cast just all did so, so amazing with this entire film. I was just not expecting this at all. Like I said, I was just, I had a smile on my face all the way through. Um, so now if you are planning to go see it, if you are planning to watch it at some point, please, uh, this is the, I'm pretty much gonna go into full spoilers now uh, because there's just so much I would like to talk about and reference as I discuss the movie in bits and pieces here. Um, so definitely make sure you check out Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It is phenomenal and fantastic in every way and I think anybody who goes to see it will really, really enjoy it. Um, so with that said, I... Uh, God, where do you even begin unpacking a film like this? It, 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 of course, explores the entire idea of the multiverse. And what I really love about that is right out the gate, they explore it um, in the best of ways. Because when other pop culture uh, you know, movies or shows explore the multiverse, they usually don't really uh, fully take advantage of the concept that is, you know, quantum theory, that is the multiverse, that you can have infinite versions of you and every person on the planet. And if you really try to comprehend that, I mean, you could have literally any possibility, any version, any combination uh, of, of, you know, relatives and, and family members and friends for each person. It is an infinite 
number. It never ends. Anything you can think of will exist and does exist in the multiverse at some point. It is infinite. And so, um, in the, I think, five or six dimensions that Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse pulls from, you don't just get the alternate version of Peter Parker who has, uh, you know, been Spider-Man for 20 years and is really in a bad spot in his life, um, but you also get you know, uh, Penny Parker, this anime version uh, of Peter, who who's actually, of course, a female. Um, I, I think uh, she is from the year like 3000 something with a robot that she uses. Um, you get Spider Pig from an entire cartoon universe. You get, um, you know, the, the Spider Detective character, who's, of course, voiced by Nick Cage. And you, of course, also get Spider Gwen, who comes from a universe where Peter died and she became Spider Woman. I mean, to me, that is so great because the, the alternate versions of them aren't just, you know, okay, Peter's a businessman in this version, um, you know, yada, 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 this guy's a bank robber in this reality. No, they really go all out. And I love that. Um, and I, I think that that was so much fun. Uh, all, the, all the individual characters that eventually came through uh, breaches and um, the intro sequence when... Miles, of course, you get the entire uh, like intro with Miles, and you get to see him and his family and and his life, you know, and and, and going to this academy which, where he doesn't really want to be. He wants to be more so at a, at a school where he knows everybody um, that he had been going to previously. Um, and it's just so so great. The character is so eccentric, but then you get to uh, him getting bitten by the radioactive spider when he's with his uncle, and um, eventually he gets to Peter. Underneath, uh, I think it was, I think it was Fisk Tower where it all went down, um, or whatever building where they had the giant, uh, you know, quantum device that opened, uh, the, you know, themselves up to the to the multiverse. Um, I forget what it was called. I think it started with a C, um, the Collider, I believe. Um, and it was so cool seeing Spider Man fighting some of his, uh, you know, fighting the the Green Goblin and Wilson Fisk. From a third uh, party perspective, from an outside perspective, from Miles' perspective, watching it happen, you don't get to see that enough, I feel. You get to see that, you know, in, in certain movies, especially like with the Avengers, and uh, you, you know, you, you do get some of that uh, across pop culture, but I never really felt like we got that with Spider Man. It was always the camera was always focused on him in some way, but here they just shot it like it was found footage, like Miles was recording it, and it was so cool. Um, I love that. And he actually did record part of it at one point, shortly before Peter dies and it was just in that moment that was spider-man that was spider-man in his prime that we were seeing in this sequence fighting the green goblin fighting uh who eventually uh we we find out uh you know the prowler who winds up uh, actually being miles uncle who you really come to enjoy and, and really uh appreciate and it, that was such a great twist and then he gets shot by fisk uh, toward the middle, that was a crazy story beat that I honestly wasn't expecting at all. Um, I mean, I put two and two together as soon as uh, he was like literally prowling around in his own apartment. There, um, it came became very clear in that sequence. But um, there was, you know, that. But in that scene with with Peter, it was so so great. That was Spider Man in every sense of the word. And then when he actually, uh, when when he pretty much gets so much debris that, that, that collapses on him and 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 uh, he realizes he's dying but that miles is like him and can pull this off and can get um, the, the the little like USB stick into the panel that would shut down the entire collider and he says promise me that you will do this what a moment and he's got the the lens torn off and you can see his eye and then miles gets away with it he tries his best ultimately can't do it right there. Um, does so by the end of the movie, of course, uh, when he comes back with the rest of the, of the, of the other versions of the characters of, of Peter from the multiverse. Um, but then when Fisk just beats down on him one last time and you realize that Spider-Man died right there. That was, that was the true version of Peter Parker who just died. <laughs> I mean, his entire life and 10 years of being Spider-Man in that reality, and that was that was where Peter Parker died in, in, in Miles' reality, in Miles Morales, uh, his, in his universe here, and it was like, oh my God, it was such a moment. And then uh, it just really hit me when when 
they handled the reaction by the general public so well. You see in Times Square on the, on, on the big, uh, you know, the giant screens, they, I finally identify the body as being Peter Parker, you know, um, and, and Spider-Man is dead, and then the entire massive funeral that is held, so, so incredible, and everybody wearing spider masks, it's, it, it's just exactly what you would expect um, the death of Peter Parker would look like, the death of Spider-Man. I think it was just handled so, so incredibly well and just really moving. The entire movie just really moves you. It is delivering such an incredible message all the way through that Stan Lee really believed in that anybody can wear the mask. And I love that. And I, I just love that by the end of the movie that that was the message that they finally delivered. Um, and it, it was it was really, really well done all the way through. I mean, I, I loved... Um, I love Miles uh, and his entire dynamic uh, with, with uh, you know, older Peter uh, from Earth. I forget which number. Um, that was fantastic all the way through. Chris Pine did such a phenomenal job at, uh, voicing Peter Parker. I believe it was Chris Pine. I believe that was his name that I saw in the credits. I really, like I said, did not, I didn't actually say it, but I didn't really know too much about this movie and didn't really care to follow its development or production. Um, until finally seeing it tonight, but holy crap, man. Um, and, and of course, Spider-Gwen, now she's worked into the story. I, I, you know, that was phenomenal. The only thing that I think was really ridiculous was Wilson Fisk. Um, this iteration of him, I don't know whose idea it was to make him look the way he does, but it really pulled me out of almost every scene he was in. He, it's like, I get that he looks kind of like that in the comics, but they just went really overboard with Kingpin, and it just... Yeah, the mm. voice actor was great, but the, the character model was very, very odd, very bizarre, a little too big, looked uh, like, I don't know, man, it was, it was just, it's hard to describe, but he was just too massive and wide with a tiny head in the center. I was like, what the, very odd. Um, that was the only problem, honestly, with the entire movie. Um, that was crazy, uh, his entire fight with, uh, with Miles at the end. I, I, like I said, I can't unpack the entire movie in one singular vlog. I love, speaking of Stanley, I loved his cameo. That was so, so great. Um, and, but, and hearing his voice, though, was definitely kind of hard. Um, you know, and, and, and hearing, you know, a, a new uh, line of dialogue from him, that was, you know, tough, man. But still felt so right, of course, and, and so, so great. Um, the entire city of New York felt so alive throughout the entire movie. Uh, each sequence was just so great. There was so much, uh, so much comedic and so much comedic humor that lands so incredibly well every single time. And what I really appreciated was this, the seamless transition from the humorous scenes into the emotional scenes where you're really connected with the characters. I mean, I, honest to God, felt more connected to the characters in this movie than I think every movie in 2018, possibly including Infinity War, I'm not even joking. Uh, the movie just, like I said, moves you that much. It's insane, you have to see it for yourself. I can't unpack it in one vlog, but I had to talk about it at least a little bit. I loved everything about it. Um, and also the, the spider cave, by the way, and, 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 uh, and how, um, and how uh, Aunt May was just so grounded in what Peter does at this point. You know, he's been in this, in this reality, been Peter for 10, he's been Peter, he's been Spider-Man for 10 years. And so she completely grasps the multiverse because she has already encountered a ton of different, all the different versions have already come to her and are already down in the spider cave. And um, that was, I loved Aunt May in the entire movie. I thought that then, you know, when she also, also, when she gets in, when she kicks in a gear, that was uh, also really great. When, you know, when, uh, Peter's house gets attacked, or Aunt May's house, rather. Um, I, I, it's like, it's tough to even form my words. It's also two in the morning, uh, um, like usual when I film these vlogs. But, oh uh, God, man. All the references that were spread throughout the entire movie. I mean, you know, um, I think it might have, it was either, uh, it was either Miles' dad or Miles' mom when they're flipping through their contacts and you see like Steve Ditko's name pass by, um, the ending sequence, the Spider-Man 2099, and, and you know, the pointing at each other meme from the classic cartoon that at the end credits, that was so, so great. Um, every part of this movie, very much like the Lego movie, is just so creative and so much passion drilled into every frame and I just, 
was not expecting any of this. Now I'm sure at the end of this vlog, a lot of you guys are asking, okay, you love this movie to death. Are you going to make figures? And uh, I wish that might disappoint some of you guys, but I just also made the list for Avengers Endgame, the Avengers Endgame showcase coming out in April. And the schedule is already so packed that I don't think I could fit two or three uh, fully painted Spider-Man minifigures on there at all. Webbing takes so long to paint properly. Getting it, you know, precise on each figure would be, it would take way too much time that unfortunately I, I don't have. Um, but that's why we have these Lego sets that Lego put out. Uh, you know, there's the spider mech versus venom and uh, you know the spider man's spider crawler all these really great sets that are very obviously uh, Designed to celebrate uh, spider verse obviously something didn't work out to where they were not able to make Lego sets um, Or they just chose not to whatever happened Lego did not make uh, Spider sets directly for spider verse, but this lineup I think is clearly meant uh, You know to celebrate and to coincide with the release of this film um, especially when, when a lot of the, the minifigure designs are, are pretty close to how they appeared um, in Spider-Verse anyway, but yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not totally out of the question, but it, for now it is. But uh, that doesn't mean there aren't a ton of really amazing figures that I think you guys are going to love and uh, really look forward to. And by the way, yeah, I did get uh, the spider crawler, which I will be uh, building uh, during an Instagram stream uh, today, actually. So that should be great. Um, and yeah, man. I don't know. I feel like there's something else that I really want to talk about in this vlog that I totally forgot about. Oh yeah, uh, this, on a more negative note, the CW's Elseworlds crossover happened. I get into a lot of disagreements with a lot of people uh, regarding the current state of the CW shows, uh, but as a huge fan of The Flash, as a huge fan of Arrow, and when I say The Flash, more so Arrow, you know, more so in, in its first uh, and second seasons, kind of went downhill. Uh, after that, even though Savitar was a really cool villain, the, the rest of what went on in season three wasn't so so great. Um, season four was horrendous, and then uh, season five is okay. But yeah, the Elseworlds crossover, just like I said, as a fan, it just disappointed me in just about every way. Um, it was great seeing Batwoman, it was great seeing Amazo, it was great seeing Supergirl and Small, Supergirl, Superman, Smallville, um, Lois Lane, so many great things in such a shitty crossover and it really disappointed me. And I know a lot of people don't agree with that and I'm really glad that so many of you are able to really still enjoy the shows though. Um, because they, I, I don't know, I, I just can't get a pa I can't get past all the really cheesy dialogue, I can't get past um, the, the poor CGI, I can't get past the ridiculous story that was in that crossover. Um, going to Arkham Asylum and seeing a bunch of Batman villains' names on some doors is, is not going to make me, you know, let all that stuff slide. Um, but like I said, I'm glad that there are still plenty of people that are able to enjoy uh, these, you know, these shows. Arrow has been really great recently. Um, everything, I'm not going to spoil anything if you haven't seen it, obviously. Um, but this entire first half of season seven has been pretty fantastic. I mean, and and so unique and such a reinvention uh, for the show, which it really needed. Um, and yeah, but I just want to just to end that quick conversation. I loved Crisis on Infinite Earth, Crisis on Infinite Earth. That's next year, um, which I'm not looking forward to at this point. But I loved Crisis on Earth X last year. I th I thought the whole Earth X storyline was really great and so exciting, um, and I really felt like all the characters were in their prime all throughout that crossover, and it was just so exciting. I think all throughout the three or four episodes that it was, but uh, the same could not be said for Elseworlds. It was a a, a drastic decrease in quality, and it's a shame. It's a shame, um, for me anyway, and that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think, but, um, yeah, I think that's mostly it. I'm kinda, I don't wanna keep you guys too long here, but I also don't wanna forget other things. But anyway, that's it, guys. Um, so much Spider-Man, so much awesome that uh, came from this movie, and I can't wait to review uh, the Spider-Crawler, and uh, who knows, maybe the other uh, two sets that are, was it two or three other sets that are in the lineup? I don't know, I don't really include the junior sets even though there are some good minifigures in those. Um, that's it though guys, uh, thanks for sticking around for however long this was, I know it's been ridiculously long. I'm talking about a lot of extra stuff because this is the extra channel, so. All right guys, I will catch you in the next video. And uh, yeah, take care. All right, bye-bye.